Hello, this is Charting Man Dan of The Chart Guys, where we teach the little guy and girl how to utilize charts to manage their own trades and investments. What do I mean by the little guy and girl? Well, we just had two directives signed halting the implementation of a rule that requires financial advisors to act in the best interests of their client. Let that sink in a little bit. The big wigs on Wall Street can play with your retirement and hard-earned money without your best interests at heart. We currently have hundreds of members taking charge of their financial future, and we would love for you to come check out a free week with no credit card required to see if our services would be beneficial on your path to financial independence as well. What we offer, we have a separate course of over five hours in length on when to enter and exit positions. And in terms of what we do daily, we have nightly videos, key levels updated each morning before the bell, two and a half hours of live daily web webcam coverage in the morning and in the afternoon, and over seven hours of educational videos. All of these links can be found in the description of this video. Come check us out. Thanks for watching. Let's get on to the technical analysis. Hey everyone, checking in on the market rundown, SPY, IWM, and QQQ. So a very, very tight range, the smallest range of 2017 trading today, and likely to see a pretty tight range tomorrow as well as we head into the FOMC, which will be the mover of the week. So an inside candlestick, we got a range with a break of 237.24 being bearish, which would lead to a test of the middle Bollinger Band, and a break of 237.86, and we have that double top from Friday, 238.02 is the next resistance after that. So the bulls are still in control. They close the day with all hourly moving averages still as support and up near the high with a bull move at the end of the day. So a very, very limited trading opportunity as far as the S&P 500 is concerned today. But as long as this daily middle Bollinger Band holds, the bulls remain in control. The weekly time frame, not much to see here. We are still holding exponential moving average supports and the bulls did buy the dip last week with that little bit of a lower wick. So still holding strong and everybody just waiting for Wednesday. IWM also saw some upside. A bit stronger than the S&P 500, but considering where we're coming from overall is definitely still weak. And this could be a potential bear flag on the daily time frame. A weak bounce attempt to cool off the technicals before continuation to the downside and the upper wick with resistance from the 50-day moving average of 136.69, certainly not giving confidence to the bulls. So the bears are still strong on IWM. It's going to require a big time turnaround for the bulls with higher lows and higher highs now that we have pulled back significantly. And obviously that rejection from the 50 day, not the kind of close that the IWM bulls wanted. This 50 or this middle Bollinger Band, I should say, is 134.32. That is the key level on this weekly time frame for the bulls to maintain this long term uptrend. And if we do lose that level for the first time in four months, it will be a red flag for the bulls. But still holding strong, bulls still in control. And we will see if we can get over that 50 day moving average. If we can't get over that 50 day moving average, the likelihood of a bear flag is a lot higher. QQQ, new all time high, very strong, 131.68. We got up, actually, I take that back. We missed that all time high by four pennies, but we closed right at that all time high. We're four, seven cents shy. So the odds tomorrow that we do hit a new all time high, more likely than not. But we need to wait for that level to break as it is still a resistance. So the bulls are very strong. Certainly the strongest of the three, and the middle Bollinger Band hasn't even been touched since the first day, the first two days in 2017 touched the middle Bollinger Band, and since then we've been so strong we haven't even needed to test that support. So the weekly time frame, bulls continue, inside candlestick already breaking to the upside to favor the bulls this week, and if we get that break of 131.68, we're looking up at 132 as the next psychological resistance, as the bulls will be in full control. So the S&P 500 Key inside candlestick can give us some volatility, likely going to see more volatility tomorrow than we did see today just because that range was so tight. So there will be some trading opportunity. But again, Wednesday, the FOMC is the big decision maker. And some people in my videos have been saying how it's priced in that we are going to see a rate hike in March. And I absolutely do believe that. It's almost certain at this point in terms of the odds. If we do not see a rate hike, we're going to see a bullish reaction in gold and in the markets. But it's the language looking forward that is the question mark. That's what's going to give the driving force in terms of a bullish or bearish reaction to the S&P 500 and the market. As far as the market is concerned, we're going to have a rate hike. There is no surprise there. If we see language that dictates that we will likely see more rate hikes than anticipated in 2017, that would be the language that would lead to a bearish reaction. So that's my opinion on the FOMC. Going to be exciting. We'll go live for that when it does start playing out. I appreciate you watching. Have a great rest of your night.